Let's talk about bass drum beaters. And specifically, let's talk about these Lowboy custom wood beaters. So I've been using these beaters for probably a year or so now, I think. So it's about time I make a review about them. Uh, this was the first one that I got. And Lowboy is a company from Denver, Colorado in the US. They make these really, really cool custom wood beaters. And they're custom in the sense that not only like when you order your beater from them online or whatever, not only are they customizable in the sense that you can have them uh, aesthetically look however you want, like the different color combinations and all of that, they're very customizable. And that way you can have your logos like um, burned onto the beater and stuff like that. They do some really cool artist collabs for some really spaced out beaters. Uh, so the, the, look of, the look of the beater is very customizable, but of course you want, you want the beater that feels the best for you and sounds the best. You want, that's what the beater is all about at the end of the day. So they have of course some different variations for like what type of beater you can get. So again, this is the standard wood one. Uh, they have this, but with a felt on it and they have it with leather, wool. So this is really, really soft sound. And then they have all of these in uh, like a lightweight version. So this is the lightweight, just the normal wood lightweight um, beater. So what I want to do today is I want to play all of these side by side, really let you guys hear the difference between them. And I will say this, there is a very, a very, very slight difference in sound. It's not something massive. It's, it's something that's more, it's a combination of the, diff the slight difference in sound and a slight difference in feel. And it's more, I've noticed when I play these side by side that it's more of a noticeable difference in person when you're playing it. Because you can not only hear, but you also feel kind of how the bass drum reacts under the beater. Like for example, if you have a, a the wood beater, which has a lot of smack and kind of a punchier feel to it, compared to this one, which is very, very soft and kind of bounces off of the head, it feels very different. It also does sound different, but I would encourage you guys to listen to the, the side by side comparison using some quality headphones or speakers or something. So you really, really hear the difference. So with all of that out of the way, let us dive in. Let us play all of these five beaters side by side and let you hear exactly what they sound like. So uh, here we go.
So I hope you were able to hear the subtle differences between these beaters. And again, it really is subtle when you're listening to what, just what the microphone picks up at the other side of the drum. But when you're sitting here right in front of the batter head, you know, and you're getting the full experience of playing these different beaters, there definitely is a difference. Because I have my favorite, which is just the standard wood beater. This is the first one I got, and it's still my favorite out of all of these. But when I want something that's, you know, a lot rounder, you know, softer kind of sounding, this is such a much better option because this has just too much attack for something when you want that kind of sound. So often I find myself switching between these particular two. Uh, for example, the, the leather and the felt is somewhere in between. Like these are the two extremes, I, I, I guess. And the lightweight version, I like a heavier beater, so I tend to not use the light weight so much, but it is cool to have it as an option as well. So basically there's a lot of different options depending on what you're looking for. I'm sure you will be able to find something in these low boy beaters. So uh, I a little while back I asked you guys on Instagram in preparation for making this video if you had any questions you would want to know since I have all of these different ones. I want to make sure that I let you guys know you know what you want to know from a re review video like this. So I have a couple of questions that I wrote down from you guys. So I want to go through those really, really quickly and just give you some short answers to make sure you guys know exactly what you're in for if you're looking to pick up these low boy beaters. So let's dive in. How is the speed and feel influenced by surface, size, and weight? I would say speed is not really influenced by the surface so much, as that has more to do with the weight. If you want to play something really fast, like fast double kicks or something, you might want to go for the lightweight beaters. In terms of feel, and like the, the wood beater really has a much more of a smack to it. it, it bounces off the beater in a different way compared to, for example, Lamb's wool one. So they all feel slightly different. Basically, if you tend to prefer, you know, usually we know what we tend to prefer. If you tend to prefer felt beaters over wood or something, Go with the felt beater, it's probably gonna like, feel great for you. Why do you use them? I mean, when I picked up the first beater, this one, I was really just looking for a heavy wood beater. And I was seeing these, these low boy beaters guys all over the place on Instagram and everything. So I figured, you know, what the hell, let's let's give it a try and see what it's all about. And also like, they're really, really cool guys, the people behind the company. And I, I really like what they do on Instagram and on social media in general. Like they really have this kind of family vibe about them. And whenever I can, you know, use products by brands like that, I'm I'm all about it. So I love these, these beaters, not just for the beaters themselves, but also for the fact that just knowing that I'm supporting something which is a really, really good, just an all around good company with good people that ties the community together. I'm, I'm all about that. Okay, so this question is in Swedish, so I'm gonna read it in Swedish and then in English. So, hur bra skulle klubban med filt på funka till små akustiska gig med en 16 tum eller 18 tum kick? So in English, how good would the beater with a felt on it work for like small acoustic gigs with a 16 inch or 18 inch kick? Uh, I would say if you're going for something like a smaller bass drum like that, and especially like a small acoustic gig, you might want to go for the lightweight beater and then the surface of it, again, it's just mostly just preference, but if for something jazzier like that or something smaller, like a small 16 inch bass drum or something, maybe the lamps will beater or the felt would probably work really, really well. But in general, probably go for the like the the lightweight version. But again, it, like it really just depends. If you want a heavy hitting sound, doesn't matter what the size of your bass drum is, go for the standard size beater and any surface of your preference. And if you want something a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to move and play like soft with, you might want to go for the lightweight beater. I think that's where it re what it really comes down to. How do they work in a double pedal setup? Uh, I haven't personally tried in a double pedal setup just because I don't own two of the exact same and also I don't really play double pedal that much, but I can imagine they would work just as well as any other beaters. If you wanna play really, really fast, you might wanna go for the lightweight ones, but if you want a lot of power, uh, just go for you know go for these and hit the bass drum really hard. You're gonna get a lot of powers out of, the, out of these. I'm gonna get a lot of power out of your bass drum with two of these on a double pedal. Are they expensive when shipped overseas? Yes, kind of. Uh, to, like in general, I want to say these are not like your really, really cheap beaters. These are pretty much like they're kind of a novelty item. You know, it is it's custom work. It's like handmade by these guys over in the U.S. It's really, really cool stuff. It's not you know your factory made, mass produced DW beater or something. This is a bit more of a novelty item. So they're already not super cheap to start with. But then I ordered you know from the U.S. to here to Sweden, so I had to pay a little bit extra in in post in in postage, like just shipping it here and then also there was a little bit of tax when you know when declarations kind of stuff when it came into the country so that added maybe an, a third extra on on top of the price of what it originally would have cost if i were in the u.s to say i can't remember exactly how much they are right now how much that cost me in total but yes they do they do expect to pay a little bit more if you are shipping them from overseas but again it's a bit of a novelty item. I don't regret regret a thing with buying these from overseas, uh, but do know that yes, they do cost a bit extra when you do that. 
And a related question, are they worth the price? I would say, again, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more of a novelty item and you want something that's pretty special and you want it customized for you and you want to also support a really cool company, all the way they are worth it. But if you're looking for just like a wood beater, doesn't really matter what it is, then there's probably cheaper options for you out there that's not going to be so special, but it's a wood beater. You see what I mean? Are they balanced? Yeah, I would actually really say so. I mean, sure, it's it's a wider diameter at the front and a smaller diameter at the back. So like I showed you, you can use the back side. But the fact that there's less beater at the front and, and more beater at the back kind of evens it out. So it's actually not it's it's not really front heavy, nor is it back heavy. It's it's actually a really, really well balanced beater. They are, of course, a little bit heavier than your normal beater, but that's what I like with these. So yeah, I would say they're really, really, really well balanced and they feel really great to play with. Are they durable? Yes, but there is one thing I want to mention about durability, which is actually pretty important. Um, you know, you usually have like a, a an impact patch. You know, this thing you stick on the on, the, on your batter head to protect the bass drum head uh, from taking damage from the beater. Uh, depending on what beater you're using, you might want to consider what uh, impact patch you're using, or the other way around. So, for example, I'm using like the the Mylar patch. So. That works really, really well with a wood beater because th that won't chip away on the surface of a wood beater. And if I were to use a plastic uh, patch instead of a mylar, which I have before, wood against plastic tends to make this kind of like this kind of ugly sound when you're if you're burying the beater. So you, that might be a bit annoying. So if you're going with a wood beater, you're probably gonna want to use um, a mylar patch. But if you're using, for example, the the leather beater, you can see because I played the leather on this mylar patch, it actually wore away a little bit on the leather. You can see it's taking a little bit of a hit here. Same thing with felt, you know, because mylar kind of eats away on any surface like that, where it's eventually it's gonna become slanted like this just because the mylar impact patch has eaten away off, it, off of it. So if you're using like the wool or the leather or the felt, you might wanna go, you might wanna make sure you use an impact patch on your bass drum head that's made from plastic. And again, if you're using the wood, uh, just a straight up wood beater, you might wanna go for mylar. So, just something to keep in mind if you really want to make sure that they have a really long, uh, a really long lifespan. These beaters uh, consider what patch you're using. But even then, they're still really, really durable beaters. These are not gonna snap or break on you. They they really hold up well. How heavy are they and do they harm your heads? So these are probably, I mean, it's been a long time since I played any other beater, but I would say they are probably a little bit on the heavier side, which again is what I like in a bass drum beater. I like a lot of impact, uh, but they don't actually really harm your head. So again, if you're using uh, an, any impact patch, preferably one that works well with the beater, you're not gonna break your heads. I've been playing, like I hit pretty hard on my bass drum. I play, you know, every single day pretty much on this kit and I've been using the same head since the start of this year. So what's that, like nine months, eight, Month, eight or nine months or something, I've been using the same head and I've been beating the hell out of it and it's still, it hasn't given up on me. It's been a long time since I broke a bass drum head and never with any of these beaters. So, uh, I mean, they don't really harm your head. So, I mean, I don't think really any beater actually harms your head as long as you're just using an impact patch and maybe not beating the ever living shit out of it. So, yeah, I'd say I'd say they hold up really well. Uh, your bass drum head is gonna hold up really well and the beaters feel really great. They are on the heavier side, which I love. They feel really, really great. Do they hit the top of your foot if you're too swingy? I mean, you know, it bouncing back and kind of hitting your foot with the backside of this. I mean, yeah, if you have your beater really, really far back, but that's the case with pretty much every beater. I haven't noticed these hitting my, the back of my foot more than anything else I've ever used, and that pretty much never happens. So no, I wouldn't really say you're gonna have an issue with that. Are they good for light playing? For example, jazz? Yeah, I mean, the lightweight version is pretty light, actually. It's very, very easily maneuverable. So something like this would really work well for jazz. But even the heavy ones, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it just comes down to your foot technique. Can you hammer nails into the wall with them? I mean, look at it. Probably. And finally, are they good for getting better double strokes or speed? I would say, I mean, I mentioned this like two questions ago really briefly. It all comes down to technique. At the end of the day, to be honest, like it doesn't matter what beater you're using or what pedal you're using. I mean, of course it matters in the way that it might make you play better. It might, it might feel more comfortable to, for you to play on a beater you know or, or, or a pedal that you're comfortable with, you know? But at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that your bass drum technique or your foot technique is so good that it doesn't matter what you're playing. I mean, look at some of the best players like look at like Jojo Mayer and his foot technique. Like I mean, he has his own this special designed pedal for him, which I actually used for a while. Uh, I mean, he can play like a monster on that pedal, but he can play like a monster on any pedal because his foot technique is just up there. You know what I'm saying? So like, 
work on your technique. Uh, it doesn't really like don't rely on gear to fix anything for you. At the end of the day, that's not this is just not how it works. But with that said, I mean, if you like a heavy beater or if you like a light beater, you know, one of these two with whatever surface you want might make things a little bit easier for you. But at the end of the day, it's all about technique. So that will be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there are any more questions you have, anything else I missed to talk about in terms of these beaters, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys soon with some more videos. Take care.